Scanning for audio. Hello and welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a review of Dad's Army, which was a special release from Big Finish, and that's gone down quite well. So what I thought I'd do is I'd do another review of something that they've done, well, it came out the same week, and it means a lot to me, um, for reasons I'll talk in a second, but it's not Doctor Who, so if you're here for the sci-fi move along, move along, but if you're a fan of classic stuff, well, stick with me. So, there are people out there who have no idea who Roy Hood is, okay? Now, there's a picture of him on the cover, so you'll be able to spot that one. Roy Hood was kind of a musical entertainer in the Max Miller tradition, And he was very, very good. You would see him on anything. Now, he did a lot of straight acting as well. You would often see him in things like casualty and stuff like that. But to me, he was always a great, almost a host, but a comedian, comedy actor, very good, almost brilliant, always brilliant in everything he ever did. And he had the longest running satirical radio show in the world and it was called the News Hoodlines. Now some of you out there will be going what a... trust me on this one. Things like the Now Show, Spitting Image, all of those other things if you know them you know that they've got heritage. Um, That was the week that was. All of those pure satire shows which are primarily written by you know posh guys Uh, who were middle class and that kind of thing. But Roy wasn't. Roy was a very working class comedian with a musical background. He could deliver a punchline and a gag. So what they did was they had the radio for political commentary sensibilities, but the radio to touch of the people. Now, I'm about, what, eight? Maybe he's younger. And I had a plastic radio... Um, as you would and it looked like Pinocchio's head it was a flat thing Um, and I could get Radio 2 now at night when I was supposed to be asleep I would either be reading or trying to read or I would have my radio on really quietly so no one would know I was still awake now we've already had this discussion elsewhere that everyone seems to have like bands and music that means a lot to them but for me it was audio drama And my Radio 2 signal was better than my Radio 4 signal. So I got comedy. And every once a week, you would get the news headlines. Now, these people were doing impressions and satire on things that I didn't even know what was going on. So like a lot of people, I was possibly just tuning in for the silly voices and the characterizations. But it was here that I was learning about how politics worked, how the UK worked, and how things go together, and also how to deliver a punchline. Because Chris Emmett, June Whitfield, I know, June Whitfield was doing Mrs. Thatcher. And there was a band that was always on, and the music was live, and it was recorded. It was just brilliant. It was kind of a highlight of the week. And that stayed with me for a long, long time. I would often just dip back into it and experience it. So, Roy Hood, eventually, as happens to, I would say, most of us, no, it's everyone, dies. And there's a tribute performance. Now, this is where Dirk Maggs comes along. The tribute performance to Roy's life has a twist. They decide to do a tribute to the news hoodlines, Roy's 
crowning glory. Yes, he did some superb other stuff, trust me. You could YouTube some stuff and see some incredibly heartfelt performances because no one does tragedy quite as good as a comedian. And there's this thing. Let me just read some of the notes. The Roy Hood lines was staged on Sunday the 14th of May 2023 at the Sondheim Theatre in London's West End. The cast, writers and producers of BBC's longest running audience comedy programme, The News Hood Lines, gathered to celebrate the life, love and laughter of Roy Hood OBE. Roy had a profound effect on all those who worked on him and listened. He was a unique combination of comedy genius, wise mentor and cheeky uncle. The cast reunited for one joyous hurrah. In his honour of the Hoodline originals, Chris Emmett. Chris was so good. Alison Stedman. Yeah, I know. This is in a release with Alison Stedman in it. <sighs> Nicola Ancliffe and producer Richard Clegg, plus Katie Harbour and the brilliant John Coolshaw. Ah, I've got your attention now, haven't I? John Coolshaw, the brig. And they all took on Roy's centre microphone with the blessing of Roy's widow, Debbie Hood. Also assembled for this gala event were all of the writers and their comedy teeth who cut their comedy teeth on the news headlines and went to create some of the finest British comedy from the 80s, including Not the Nine O'Clock News, Spitting Image, Drop the Dead Donkey, One Foot in the Grave, and the News Hoodlines Alumni, and the legacy continues. So basically, this is a tribute, a one-off performance organised and recorded by the superb Dirk Max. I'm eternally grateful that this exists. If you ever liked British satire and you liked the sort of thing that you end up with, well, you know it. If you know it, you know it. And trust me, this is a brilliant tribute to a brilliant performer. It gives you a bit of history into Roy's life and it gives you just some fantastic comedy sketches that have been written now that are a taste of the show then. Britain is poorer without this, but I do not know a single performer, possibly with the exception, I don't know, Mitch Ben maybe, who could do this kind of thing and give it back to us. So with that, I'll play you the trailer because this is a big Finnish special release. And I, for one, am eternally grateful that this exists. And if you liked Roy, and let's face it, who didn't, you could give this a go. I'll get back to reviewing ordinary sci-fi or chatting with Luke about films that we've found or books or whatever. But this is something that's close to my heart and I just wanted to share it with you. So thank you, Dirk, for sharing it with us. Until next time, be seeing you. From Big Finish Productions. The Roy Hotlines. A middle-aged man kneels down by the bed, takes the top hat off his pencil-shaped head, and it's hush, hush, whisper who dares. Jacob Rees-Mogg is saying his prayer. God bless you, my nanny. So proper and prim, who's devoted her life to my every whim. Her eyes are like diamonds, her skin smooth as glass, her hand just the right size for wiping my nose. <laughs> God bless dear Boris, our leader no more. He's gone to make money on some foreign shore. Together at Eton we had fun and frolics. Alas, now the country's grown sick of his bluster. <laughs> God bless the gentlemen of our dear press, who've helped make our party a howling success. Though they treated their readers like gullible suckers, we're still giving knighthoods to these lying fellows. <laughs> but there's somebody else that I think I forgot. Was it Jeremy Corbyn Gadzooks? Surely not. Or perhaps the Lib Dems, oh God bless their souls. But no, I remember. God bless the pros. Yes, God bless the plebs, Harry Tom, Dick and Trevor, who hear plummy accents and think he sounds clever. 
You've had us for 13 long years now, it's true. Though really, Joe Public, I think we've had you. <laughs> Big Finish for the love of stories. That was the Tin Dog Podcast. Everything discussed is the intellectual property of others. No infringement is intended. For early access to reviews, follow the show on YouTube or Twitter at Tin Dog Podcast. To contact the show, email tin dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 